Yo, the murder of Sonic the Hedgehog. So I made a video on the day this wonderful surprise was given to us and gave you guys my reaction via live stream. Well, now I beat the game and I wanted to share my thoughts in a quick follow up video. I do want to start by saying there absolutely will be spoilers in this video. No, I'm not going to talk about every single detail of the game, but yeah. If you don't want to know main things that happen in the game, then I advise you skip closer to the end when I talk about just my overall feelings of the game and if you should play it or not. We're starting in three, two, one. Here we go. So honestly, I did not know what to think at first with a Sonic the Hedgehog visual novel. We've had games with similar dialogue styles, but this was very unique in comparison. The story is completely canon. At least I'm saying it is. <laughs> One thing I was wrong about in my reaction video was the character creation. The only thing you can change is the name. And although I was a little disappointed at first, once I got through the story, it doesn't feel like it took away anything. The character themselves had a lot of personality. They kind of fit the dumb protagonist vibe you commonly see in visual novels and dating simulators. But once you get into the story and the mystery, you find yourself thinking in similar ways to the character. It's actually a little concerning. I really enjoyed the fact that this character is just an average Joe who lives in that universe. And they've only heard of Sonic and their friends through like stories and legends and things like that. They're just kind of like getting to know the characters from a fresh perspective. So that was very interesting, especially once you get a little bit more immersed into the game. Even for someone like me, who is very familiar with the Sonic series, it did feel like I was starting to get to know the characters for the first time. So super cool. The game had a level of simplicity that gave it a lot of charm. Nothing in the story really felt overdone but you did find yourself at moments really pondering about how certain things in the story connected, how certain pieces of the puzzle didn't make sense. And like, I truly felt like I wanted to solve that mystery. Past the storytelling part, since you were trying to solve the mystery, while you were interrogating other people, you had mini games while you were going through your quote, quote, thought process to solve that mystery. And, uh, at times they were a little difficult. Oh no, no. Oh God. Ready to cringe chat? Ah! I fucked that up for no reason. No! Oh my God. <laughs> ah! Let's try again, let's try again. But ultimately they felt very rewarding. Like as much as I cried about some of the ones I was doing, the way that they did the final boss fight was very interesting. Beating the story like that was super cool in my opinion and it hurt. I died over and over and over again and I messed up a lot, which is why you guys are not getting the playthrough right now. It's a little uh, rough, but it was so good. The game was really short. It took me about four, almost five hours to beat it. But keep in mind, I was streaming. So there were quite a few pauses in between me actually playing, me talking in the chat, all that stuff. So I'd say maybe three and a half to four hours, you could beat that game. It had a lot of content, but again, it's it didn't feel overdone. I felt extremely happy with the ending. It felt complete. It felt like there was the perfect amount of rehash of other experiences and other games. They weren't just like throwing in references from other games for no reason, which as much as I love Sonic Frontiers, I feel like sometimes they kind of did that a little too much. It felt like there was the right amount of character inclusion. They didn't try to stuff like every character into the game just for the sake of nostalgia. But it was super nice seeing people like Blaze, which we haven't really seen play a main role for a long time. Vector, Espio, and even the scene at the end where they showed Metal Sonic and Sage kind of cheering for Dr. Eggman. <laughs> that was really cute. 
But we're gonna go ahead and keep this video short. I could blab about this for pretty much the amount of time I played the game. I'm not gonna rate this game on a scale of one to 10 because honestly, I don't really know where I would put it. I don't really know what I would compare it to either. Do I compare it to other visual novels? Do I compare it to other Sonic games? That part gets a little complicated. And again, for the sake of keeping this video short, we're just gonna kind of stop there. But it was a pleasant surprise. Even more good news, the Sonic Twitter page recently posted saying that they've gotten overwhelmingly positive responses from this game, which is wild with it being a completely different style game than they normally do. Even scrolling through the comments, you see people asking for things like this again, more short games like this, maybe themed games like this. It was awesome. And whether you're a Sonic fan or not, I do recommend you give this game a try. It's just a good visual novel. It's a really good mystery story. There were some things that kind of like threw me for a loop, but if you're a Sonic fan, you'll really enjoy this as well. You'll enjoy seeing a different side of all of the characters that you love. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope those of you who played the game enjoyed it as much as me. I will be posting more Sonic content as it comes. Stay comfy.